Kiwi Music Month, isn't it? Having you on. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very excellent. Thank you. So Kiwi Music Month is worthwhile, do you think? Yeah, it's really worthwhile. I mean, the whole um, cheerleading for New Zealand music thing is, uh, is kind of necessary now, but in a few years it probably won't be necessary. Like in Australia, they brought in a quota, um, a 20% quota some years ago, and in a very short space of time, um, the, all, all the stations started playing more than 20% because the public wanted it. Yeah. And that's going to happen here really soon. Yeah, you know. so we actually, as you say, cheerleading's a really nice way to describe it. We have to really sort of pump up Kiwi music and then it can just start to sail along. Yeah, all right, now we do. I mean, when, when, when I started being in bands, it was really very weird for a New Zealand band to have uh, a gold record little, or even sell a few thousand copies. And now platinum records are pretty common. So when did you first get involved in bands? Um, I was in my uh, 20s, well, I was, when, I was, when I was about 15 I was in a covers band um, and, uh, we, and then in, when I was about 20 uh, we formed Blam Blam Blam. Which Where did that of, name come from? Um, it was given to us actually, um, we were part of a kind of loose circle of friends, um, the centre of, of which was this poet and, uh, and playwright called Richard von Sturmer and he's, um, he's now living overseas but he's still a good, good mate and he, um, he had a kind of uh, live theatre group called Inside Information and, uh, and he, I think he'd had this band Blam Blam, this name lying around for a while and he kind yeah. of donated it to us because we needed One it. of the big Blam 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 songs was of course Depression in New Zealand. Yep. Well there is no depression yep. in New Zealand. Did you genuinely believe that at the time? Uh, no, it was sarcastic. Um, Richard wrote the words for that and, uh, and like a lot of our songs, um, uh, it was kind of, um, kind of a, a, a rant. You know, um, and uh, well, like we had a song, we had a song that uh, that Richard ri had written, Richard written the lyrics for, um, called "Frank Gill's an Idiot," and they were kind of like just basic rants about about public figures. Yeah. And uh, um, luckily, we'd inherited these lyrics from previous bands, um, and we still had this drawer full of stuff, and it gave us a kind of body of work to, to kind of draw on, and then, yeah. and, it, and also the different members and different people in the band in Blam 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 actually started writing, um, and it gave us a kind of a sort of seedbed to... Oh, to how long in. was the band together? We were only together for about three years. And then you went off and you started up... Well, I went overseas for a while and I worked, um, I lived in New York and I, I worked in uh, a dance company. I was a musician in a dance company. And um, then when I came back, I kind of didn't want to be in bands. I wanted to kind of combine the storytelling you could get in theatre with, uh, with rock and roll. And I'd met Harry Sinclair, who was an old schoolmate of mine anyway. And uh, so we formed The Front Lawn, which is a kind of two-hander um, live theatre duo. So the philosophy was not just about music, it was also about theatre and having the whole performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we were kind of a, uh, like a Swiss army knife. Uh, we, we, we could be lots of different things. We, we, uh, we had these ideas and some of the ideas in our sketchbook would turn into a song and some of them would turn into a little piece of theatre. Who and were others. you actually aiming at with the front lawn? Um, we were kind of, it was kind of um, amusing ourselves really. Uh, and then when we put it in front of people, we, we had these ideas which, which were kind of working out serious notions that we were discussing. Yeah. Um, and when we put them in front of people, people tended to fall about. Um, and we didn't realise we were going to be a comedy act. And before we knew it, we were, we were turning up in comedy festivals, so we mm. must have been a comedy act. It wasn't really a But that plan. was fine with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we wanted to be entertaining. And um, we found... We found that um, if we took things really seriously, we became even more ridiculous. Yeah. And so people tended to laugh. But I mean, there's a very serious side to your songwriting also, because you wrote a song about the death of your brother Andy, didn't you? Um, yeah, uh, well, my, uh, my songs in the front lawn sort of shows tended to be the quiet bits. So we'd do this sort of slapstick storytelling, and then, uh, and then I, would, uh, I would sing a song. And a lot of my stuff is quite reflective, because I suppose I'm that sort of guy. Um, and um, and then when the front lawn kind of ran its course, um, the the songs I had the ha I had sitting around were, were ended up being the first mutton bird songs, and some of them are quite gothic. Some of them are stories about going out into the countryside and being scared. What's Anchor Me about? Uh, Anchor Me's a love song. It's just it's just 
I was, there's a lot of um, sea imagery in pop songs and love songs, right? There's a lot of people say, uh, comparing their loved one to a safe harbour or a, you know, or calm seas or something like that. And I thought that's a lot of nonsense, really, because being in love is, is a sort of perilous state, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and so I wanted to write something which had a lot of storms in it, and, but it was about asking someone to hold you in the eye of the storm. Yeah. That was what I was trying to get at. And then there was Dominion Road, which was far away from being a love song. Yeah, no, Dominion Road was a, uh, it was a kind of a, um, the, you know, kind of a situation where I was in the bus and I looked out, looked out and I saw a bloke, a sort of disoriented chap in the middle of Dominion Road, there's a lot of them around. Um, and uh, I wanted to kind of create a backstory for him, so I went home and I, and I, I sort of tried to imagine how he got to where he was. And uh, it was part of, part of I think, a desire to start to start naming things around where I live, because that's I mean, getting back to that New Zealand Music Month thing, that's that's really important that you name that you make make pieces of art or songs or stories about where you live, yeah. because. Um, uh, it sort of sings the world into being. In a was way. being famous, having fame important to you <laughs> during the course of your 20-year <laughs> career so far? No, not, no? no not really. Um, we we kind of knew we were onto a good thing because we'd sold some records and the the whole sort of mission statement of, of the band, of the Mutton Birds I'm, I'm talking about now, was was to do the best shows and make the best records that we could that so we could So is the mushroom bird still in existence? Yeah, we're just having a bit of a lie down at the moment. We're, we're um, uh, most of the band are back in New Zealand doing different things. Ross, uh, the drummer, is playing with Tim Finn. Oh, okay. Um, David, the original guitarist, is uh, working on um, working on music for the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. He's music editing for for yeah. the for the second film now. Um, and um, what are you doing? I'm doing the music for Street Legal at the oh, moment. Oh, okay, yeah. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of because because we're into the third series. I sort of know what I'm doing now, so I've, I've got time to write songs. Are we going to see the Mutton Birds back on tour or anything like that? Um, what we what we're planning is a best of record and a best of album, yeah. and that'll be either either the end of this year or the end of next year. Good stuff. Thank you, Don, very much for coming in. You're going to be performing for us later on. Yeah, I'm doing a new song. A new song. Mm -hmm. Don McGlashan's new song heard here first on Good Morning. Thank you.